Welcome to another edition of PAC TV Community News. This week marks our one year anniversary on PAC TV, and we wanted to take a moment to say thanks to all our viewers. Yes, it's been a fabulous year for both Kim and myself, and we'd also like to thank the staff and management of PAC TV for making this program possible. This week, we'll look at programs at two of our local libraries that reach out to young readers. And we thought it would be fun to share what we've kind of learned with younger kids. Well, technology is really important in libraries this day. PAC TV Community News also brings you to a pre-concert performance in Plymouth. This might be the most effective thing I've ever seen, the most family-like thing I've ever seen. And we'll take you to a historic boat launching in Kingston. So it's the culmination of six years of work by a host of volunteers. An accomplished expert joins us for a health and wellness segment. Basically, inflammation is your body's response to stress, injury, and toxins. And Town Talk is from Duxbury. It's all on this week's edition of PAC TV Community News. The recently restored Duxbury Duck sailboat, the Merry Wing, was relaunched at Jones River Landing. The six-year restoration was led by Peter Ehrenstam, boat shop director and captain of Plymouth Plantation's Mayflower II. The project involved over 80 volunteers with an interest in wooden boat building or who just wanted to learn more about this maritime craft. PAC TV Community News was there to capture this memorable and historical event. It's the culmination of six years of work by a host of volunteers. Over 80 individuals have worked, usually Wednesday nights, to rebuild this Duxbury Duck. Um, it's an old classic day sailor that was built in 1928 and was literally rebuilt from the ground up. Um, as they brought the old boat in six years ago, the keel dropped out of it. It was that fragile, that old boat. And we just had the relaunching today. On such a beautiful day like today, it's hard to remember the very many cold days. Uh, the, the shop is heated by wood stoves. So uh, there are very many evenings of cold, um, cold days. And, uh, but most of the time uh, in the shop, the, biggest, the best part of it was the camaraderie among the guys working on the, uh, on the project. Many of them had little carpentry experience. Um, and they were learning how to build boats. However, they had many skills of their own that they brought to the project, whether they were an electrician or a plumber or an uh, engineer of some kind. Um, they all brought something to the project. The entire project was uh, volunteer, uh, built by volunteers. Yeah, I also, my full-time job is manager of the Maritime Artisans for Plymouth Plantation, where I oversee the repair and restoration of Mayflower II. And of course, uh, Mayflower came back to Plymouth Harbor after an extended stay in Fairhaven to a huge crowd in Plymouth. That, that was another great day. Very similar feel, actually, to what we have today. Among the many services offered by the Pembroke Public Library is an outstanding youth program. PAC TV Community News stopped by to learn more. We're sitting in the children's department. Uh, basically, this is a spot for birth through sixth grade. Um, they can come and take out books in here, movies. Um, we now have Nintendo DS games, which is pretty fun. Um, we'll be ordering more of those, too, in the coming months. Uh, we have a puppet theater for the kids to use. We have a craft room for our craft programs. Um, just a lot of fun things for the kids to come in and be able to read a book, to play a bunch of games, to play Legos. Um, and then right off of this room, we also have our teen room, which we keep all our summer reading books in there for the middle school and high school kids. Um, we have a ton of books in there. We have a computer, and we have some comfy couches you can do homework on or lay back and chat. <laughs> 
Um, well, technology is really important in libraries this day. Um, in the children's room, we don't have internet access for them, so we just put games on the computer so they can come in and play whenever they want. Um, our other computers have internet access. Some of them are filtered, but this is a great way for any of the kids to come in and do homework, for adults to come in and job hunt, you know, work on their resume. Um, we have all our databases on there, so that's a great thing you can also get at home on our website. Um, so it's really important to have that for you know teens and children to be able to do their schoolwork, especially if they don't have internet access or a computer at home. Well, we actually just got in a special new computer. Um, it's an early literacy station. We will be putting that in hopefully in the next week or two. Um, that's really great. It's especially great for the littler kids. Um, it's touch screen. It has a lot of really awesome educational games on it. Uh, big colorful keyboard. So I think that's going to be really fun and we hope to upgrade the other computers in the near future as well. Coming programs this fall um, on Wednesday, September 25th at 4 p.m. We have Toto the Tornado Kitten coming to visit. Um, if any of you remember, there was a tornado in Western Massachusetts in 2011, and the author of these books will be coming in um, about Toto the Tornado Kitten, Jonathan Hall. He rescued this little tiny kitten from the rubble, and he now brings Toto around to do different engagements at libraries and different festivals. So you can come in, hear his stories, and even get to pet Toto, so that should be fun. As always, we have story times uh, for ages two and up on Mondays and Tuesdays at 10.30, and we have our baby lap sit for ages six months to 24 months on Wednesdays at 10.30. So anyone can come to those. They're open to anyone. No registration is required. Um, hopefully in October, we'll have some great Halloween-themed programs. Um, I'd like to do a cookie decorating program um, that's going to be pretty fun and delicious. Also, hope to have the teen advisory group working on planning a Halloween game night um, and trick-or-treat night at the library. So, be trying to plan some fun games and different activities for that. Um, and then, I guess looking ahead to November, um, as some of you might know, the release of Catching Fire, the second Hunger Games book will be coming out, so hoping to have a party for that for the teens, um, you know, some prizes, some games, different things having to do with that. And then we also have Big Ryan coming in November. He's going to be doing a program called Building Stories with children ages three to five and their caregivers. So basically be kind of making your own stories and writing and reading, and that should be really fun. And I think a lot of you probably know him, and apparently he is a great time. I haven't seen him yet, but I'm excited. <laughs> Come into the library and visit us. Um, you know, go onto our website and look at our events page to see everything that's up and coming. And, you know, check us out for a book, for a movie, for a game. Um, we're here to help you. DIY, or do-it-yourself, is a youth club at the Duxbury Free Library that recently featured a cardboard carnival made from recycled materials. PAC TV Community News visited the library for a closer look. We have a weekly group that meets on Tuesday afternoons of middle school middle schoolers. We've been meeting during the year and in the summertime. Uh, and we're really interested in how things work and making stuff ourselves. And uh, we've done a lot of projects already on our own and we thought it would be fun to share what we've kind of learned with younger kids. So we set up this um, cardboard carnival because a lot of what we do is make things out of cardboard and use it to uh, demolish things and build things and have just a lot of fun with. Some of the activities that you might be seeing uh, at the carnival will be um, our Angry Birds set up. And then behind me here is a, what's called Stomp Rockets. We built those, those uh, launchers ourselves, and uh, the kids who come are going to make their own rockets, and then through the power of air and wind, they'll stomp on the two-liter soda bottle, and their locket, rocket will blast off. Go. 
So what we're using is a Makey Makey, which is a little circuit board that can turn anything into a video game controller. So it'll override our keyboard for any computer, and then basically you can take anything that's conductive and make it into a button on a controller. So it can be a banana, like in this case right here, we're using aluminum tape that's conductive. And basically you hold on and you complete the circuit. So by holding onto the ground and then by touching any part of the um, conductive tape or banana or anything like that, that'll allow um, the response to the keyboard. You got a high score, Quinn. Reach, a local nonprofit organization providing residential and life services to adults with developmental disabilities, is presenting a rock concert at Plymouth Memorial Hall on Saturday, September 28th. Proceeds from the concert will help raise funds for their recreation programs. Earlier this month, the group held a preview party featuring some of the performers expected to play, and PAC TV Community News was there to bring you the story. <laughs> We are here on the Plymouth waterfront in a late summer evening. It's absolutely gorgeous, and who could ask for better than that? But you know what? It's going to get better very soon, because we are here at the Waterfront Bar and Grill to find out more about the Plymouth Rock Festival, which is going to be coming to Plymouth in September. Tonight, we've got a sneak preview. We're going to get to hear from some local musical artists, as well as some legendary talents. Vicki, thank you so much for having us here tonight for this sneak preview. I'm so excited to find out more about the event. Tell me what's, what's going to be happening at the Plymouth Rocks Festival. Um, the Plymouth Rocks uh, Music Festival is our first annual, and we hope to have many more annuals and um, create a, an all-day music festival. We're going to have a gala upstairs in the blue room um, seats 200 and we're selling tickets to that just like we did every other gala you know on our invitation list and then we also have the concert and what we wanted to do was you know bring in names but also um, invite local upcoming musicians or people that have been here doing the work you know for a long time you shock me like a warning that I shouldn't come so you're not a lover, you only take and take and take and take me down. I'll tell you, you know, we are so thrilled to be down here on behalf of Reach. Yeah. Reach, one of the greatest uh, programs we've seen ever in our history in the music business. <laughs> you know, long considered a blues master and also one of the Boston's greatest contributions to the music industry. I am here talking to James Montgomery. Welcome to Plymouth. Hey, it's great to be here. I love Plymouth. You know, I've been playing here for years and years, and I'm thrilled to be uh, down here working for Reach. And, uh, but Plymouth has always been on the map for us. We've had some great times here. Now tell me a little bit more about your involvement with Reach, and how did you get to know the folks there? Uh, of all the 501c3s and these kind of organizations that I've worked for over the years, this might be the most effective thing I've ever seen, the most family-like thing I've ever seen. And, um, you know, you really, uh, it, it was just amazing how close-knit everyone was. So now we're talking to Suzanne Rafa, who is the Executive Director of Reach Incorporated. Suzanne, tell me a little bit about the organization and the services and supports you offer folks in our communities. Okay, well, we're a small, well, medium-sized organization. We're located at 20 Middle Street in Plymouth. We provide residential services to adults with some developmental disabilities. We also provide a really great store where they create art and great gifts and crafts. Um, we have a day program. We service about, um, right now it's say 86 individuals, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Yeah. How about that? 
uh, any funds that are raised from this concert are going to go to the recreational fund at Reach Incorporated. Can you tell me what that helps to pay for? Um, it helps to fulfill lifelong dreams. We just make sure that they're capable of achieving those things that they really truly want to do and it usually is surrounding family and you know events in life that they don't want to miss out on. So it's going to be an amazing event featuring all kinds of local artists and legendary artists and all going to a wonderful cause. It is, yes. Now how can people find out more about the event? Um, they can go to PlymouthRocksMusicFestival.org. We have a web page up. You can purchase tickets there and find out more. Thank you so much for your time tonight, for all of your contributions, and I'm not going to keep you away from the music any longer because we're dying to see all of you perform tonight. Well, great. Thank you, and uh, thanks for having us on. We, we need all the help we can get, and please come down and, uh, to this fundraiser. My band is on fire right now. It's the best band I've ever had. Uh, we're going to play really well. I was going to say something else, but I'll just say we're going to have a gosh darn good time. But please come down. This is a great organization. I've never seen anything quite like it, and, and the band is going to be on fire. We're going to have a ball. And thank you for your help, too. Thank you. And reporting for PAC TV Community News, I'm Donna Rodriguez. Black Feather Horse Rescue is a nonprofit organization in Plymouth that strives to improve the health and welfare of abused, injured, and neglected horses in need of veterinary services. On September 14th, from 1 to 5 p.m., this group is hosting a fundraiser at Stevens Field in Plymouth. For more information, visit their website, blackfeatherhorserescue.org. This family fun day includes music, mini horses, face painting, games, food, and many other events. Hi, I'm Dave Kelly from Advocare for PCN on their health and wellness segment. Today we're going to talk about inflammation and the effect that food choices have on your body. Basically, inflammation is your body's response to stress, injury, and toxins. Uh, today we're going to focus on the toxin part of it and what we put in our body and how that affects it. Um, the three things to basically avoid um, to decrease that inflammation in your body, you know, the joint aches you might have, a little bit of indigestion you might have uh, say after you eat or a few hours after you eat, or maybe when you go to bed, or that bloated feeling you get after a meal. There are some foods to avoid that will help decrease that over time. And these are basically coffee, dairy, and wheat. Now, a lot of people think, well, I love my wheat, I love my white bread, I love my spaghetti, you know, I love coffee, and I love to have a glass of milk. Well, there's a lot of different choices out there that can substitute for that. Uh, my choice for a coffee substitution, because I like a little bit of caffeine um, during the day, is a product called Spark from Advocare. That's from caffeine and vitamins in it as well and there are other products out there on the market that you know you can do research and see which one works best for you. Um, so once coffee's out of the way then it comes to dairy. Dairy I like to substitute, I use coconut milk, there's a few different ones out there as well. There's vanilla, there's plain, this one's by So Delicious, there's silk, many different kinds you can get them at health food stores and stop and shop. Um, also there's almond milk, which is also a good substitute. I'm allergic to almonds, so I can't drink that. Um, the next is wheat, and it's basically anything that's white. Uh, white bread, white pasta, and even whole wheat breads and such. Uh, the big thing these days is gluten and its effect on the body, and the wheat that we're drinking today isn't really the same as the wheat they were eating you know, a thousand years ago, a hundred years ago, or even the wheat that was 40 years ago, especially with a lot of the GMO to the genetically alteration of food, the gluten isn't made up the same as it was, so our bodies don't digest it the same way. Um, and there's plenty of gluten-free products out there on the market for that. Um, there is uh, gluten-free bread. This is by Char, I have, which is a good pea, good bread. Udi's also makes a bunch of breads on that as well. There are some uh, rice cakes, brown rice cakes, gluten-free. Those are good for snacks. Um, there's also gluten-free pasta. You have brown rice pasta, that's good, a little bit of sauce, cook that up. And quinoa, which is a grain, substitute that for your white rice, say. 
Uh, there's also quinoa made pasta, which is also very good. So those are the things that you can substitute for those foods. And then foods you can add in if you're not already eating them. Foods is, uh, such as fresh vegetables, uh, nuts, fruits, uh, pistachios are good. Pistachio in combination with an apple are a great afternoon snack. And peanut butter, natural peanut butter instead of skippy, that's also a good substitution with this. Cooking with olive oil and using olive oil in your salads as well. So that gives you some choices on what you can use to substitute. Um, I hope this has been helpful. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Rainy Reed, the town manager for the town of Duxbury. And it's September 2013, and there are a couple of things that I think might be of interest to a number of residents here in town. Uh, the first of which is a meeting that's going to be held at the Tarkhill building on Thursday, September 19th, at which time uh, the town planner, Tom Broderick, will be organizing with some folks at the, through the FEMA organization having to do with floodplain maps. I know that a number of residents may be interested in determining whether or not their properties are located in the new floodplain zone, and this, this uh, meeting is intended to provide the information to the public so that they can make that determination and uh, ultimately see if their insurance rates may be affected. Uh, we encourage all residents who live um, certainly along the coast or near water bodies or tributaries to attend. Again, that meeting is going to be on Thursday, the 19th of September from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Tar Kiln Building. Also on the coastal front, on, thir excuse me, on Monday, September 23rd at 7 o'clock, the Board of Selectmen is going to be hosting a public presentation on sea level rise. Uh, this, this same presentation has been presented in Situate and Marshfield, and it will certainly affect um, ultimately the property owners on the coast. Uh, so we again encourage all the residents in, that, in those areas and on riv rivers and other tributaries to attend and uh, provide, we'll be providing a bunch of information and uh, public comment and question and answer period. And that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching PAC TV Community News. Replay times are listed at pactv.org. Click on the PCN logo to watch each complete edition or individual story. And see us on YouTube by searching for PAC TV Community News Channel. Also, like us on Facebook to receive previews each week with links to all our stories. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for another edition of PAC TV Community News.